Yeah. You do it for that? It's hired. It's yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, I did. We did it out later. Like, I'm going to be the DC was his first year of show. It's not a size. But, like, for me, where he's like, I see what you're doing. And you're so He was like, the only kind of show I was saying. And I just did not. Oh, shit. It's very good. Thanks. I'm going to get by something. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
So it's like, so, and I had asked you that question before about writing a play where a character speaks to the audience, and I had written two of them, but I actually think those two are sister plays, and the device is no longer serving me. So it kind of, for me, the, the reason, who is the audience supposed to be to the character is what I, I went back and asked myself. And in each case, the one, in the one case, the audience is, is probably like the voices in her head that she's talking back to. And in another, in the other case, it's a literal like seminar that this woman is holding for, for the audience. So just, I don't know, it helped me to go back and figure out who the audience is, the characters, because we're kind of always thinking about the audience, but the audience, it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship where your audience is also, like this y'all are all in it together. So figure out who maybe the audience is to your characters, that might help, it helps me. Yeah. You were feeling like, oh, I don't feel so good about this anymore. Maybe it's time yeah. to work on it. So I think what I'm thinking is it's a legitimate thing to want to work on. Do I think in the realm of like theater making is a cheap, stupid, dumb, pop out now? No, I don't. No, I think I mean, we have a long tradition of people talking, our characters talking to the audience. Now I'm talking, right now I'm talking to the audience. So, and Shakespeare, you know, begin with Romeo and Juliet. We're talking about in a midsummer night's dream, all the way through all the plays, the characters have all their solar brief and the sides and you know, Greek tragedy and up on stage and talk to the audience in the beginning, I then following her courage or whatever they say. You know what I mean? So it's it's used and yeah, it, it, but if it's bothering you, then it could be something But you're, are you in there and you're feeling like it's not, it doesn't work any other way? Are you feeling that?
more about okay. human insight. Than yeah. Kind and just of, and again, exposition yeah. isn't a bad thing to give either. I know yeah. you came with psychology from some board. Yeah. There's a lot of like storytelling in there. Yeah. But it's done. It's in a it's way that fits the world of the show. Exactly. It fits the world of the show. It furthers the big story. It's part of the convention that's employed throughout. You know, so it's a different kind of thing. So we don't say like no exposition, but if, you're, if there was really no other way to convey the information, you know, think of plays like, like, uh, well, I don't know, look at two or three character plays where they don't talk to the audience. There's a Night wealth mother. of information. Yeah. Hmm? Night mother. Okay. Yeah. You know, where they don't talk to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And there are about a lot of ways to convey the information. Force them to, to and ask the question, do we need to know what's going on in their heads? Do we? And is telling the audience the only way to know? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if, if I like drop the microphone and walk out of the room, would you know something about what I, what I might be feeling? You, you see, I'm, I'm showing you. I'm doing an action, an activity. Maybe, and maybe you could find ways. I'm not saying you should, but if it's kind of bothering you, then think about it. Someone's going to come and see it and think so. No, I'm just not. No, no, no I'm just, I just want to distinguish. We're not going to do a rewrite based on, that's why I want to know where your notes are coming from. Let's not do a rewrite based on what some person coming to your play might think. We do a rewrite and we change stuff because what we think, you see what I mean? Because really, I don't give a fuck what somebody you know, I don't, if somebody goes about my play, a talking dog in my play, if someone goes, oh, I don't like a talking dog. Fuck you, but the talking dog is going to stay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not rewriting for the imagined audience. A lot of writers do. They imagine the audience over their shoulder, and they're rewriting in fear or in concern for the audience. Experienced writers, new writers, everybody. Lots of people do that. Both eyes on the work, rewrite because you feel something in the situation. Right? Okay, so, yeah, because there, there's so many ways to do plays, and, and like I said, I love plays where characters talk to the audience if that is, you know, I don't know what the, the person said at the beginning of R.J. Romeo and Juliet. Something, something, something. This is a story about these two star-crossed lovers, you know, and we're going to go through it, right? That's great. Great. Okay, cool. You know? I don't sit there and go, oh, come on, this is Shakespeare. No. No, but the, it's, a, it's, a, it's very powerful, you know? To be or not to be. Okay, maybe he's talking to himself. But he's also probably talking to the audience, right? All the world's a stage. Okay, he's talking to the other people. He's also talking to the world. You know, so those are... So yeah, keep look at it though, and think, is that the only way we can know what's going on in their mind? Maybe, maybe not. And it is a device, I'll be honest. Like, it's a device to engage the audience and, and, to, and to take them on a ride with it. Like, it's, it's, don't worry about that. <laughs> and you can be done, you can be free. You can be like, yeah, I'm done with my play, and it works. like right there and then it would just uh, it, it did for some reason I just let the play be what it was and I was good like, I was just because there was other stuff because I looked at the body of what I've written and not everything is you know if everything is that but there comes times especially when 
And in those particular cases, the shows are, like, they kept me up at night. Like, you had the kind where you have to jump up and you have to write. Like, that, that's how they hit me. And that's why I don't question them. Like, I did, and then I just let it go. Because it would, they would just come so quickly. I don't even know how to explain that. <laughs> it was just like I was... It was just moving through me and I was writing. And that was kind of just it. And that's the way it came. And I got doubtful about it in that way. And then I just let it go. I have, I'm good. I have another question. Um, okay, so, so like, um, in terms of character and dialogue, they say. Right. Right. Um, now, no one speaks like, Well, you know, the, the three sisters, one of them wants to go to Moscow. I 
know, if Dorothy wants to go to Oz, or if she wants to go home, you know. that I think takes on meaning you want to think of meaning because of the way it resonates. But I don't think the writer necessarily does the resonating. We set up the steps and it resonates as an accumulation of those words or moments. But not because we're trying to, you know what I mean? It's like I, I build the bell, but it rings, you know, I'm not sitting there. I feel the bell and the sound kind of happen as a, as a result of the building. I don't have a great analogy for that. That's a great analogy. But it's just sort of the, I don't, you know, I'm not thinking about, oh, what, because a lot of, it's also about writing over the shoulder. A lot of people think, yeah, what's the audience going to, you know, what, what are they going to get? They're thinking, this is your play and there's your audience. And a lot of people write that way. What's my audience going to think? What meaning do I want my audience to have? Not that you're thinking this, but a lot of people think that. And then, so let's say you have a 99 seat house. So there are 99 people at your show. So your show runs for, you know, whatever, 10 weeks. So I can't do the math, but that's a lot of people. Right? That's a whole bunch of people. Each, let's say each person has a different take on their show, given their personal experience they bring to the, the evening. I don't know what they're thinking. But I know what I think. I write this way. I don't sweat what they're thinking. I just make sure that the story is being told with the appropriate, in, in the appropriate way. And that it's unfolding in a, in a way that's you know, meaningful and makes sense to me and to people working on the show with it. You know, and the notes I'm getting from my producers, et cetera. But I can't write for everybody in the audience. I mean, top of everyone's been done, you know, again, you know, all over the world, you know, Japan, Japanese, I don't know what they're thinking. In India, I don't know what they're thinking, you know? Write this way. Both eyes on the work. You know, don't try to look over your shoulder, because they're not there. I like the most is the stuff that I'm not worried about what people are going to think when they see it and it doesn't make apologies for anything it just is what it is it, that's the stuff I enjoy writing and I'm not enjoying writing it I'm automatically wondering I, I know it's usually because I'm wondering what people are going to think about it when they read it so when I, I'm having the best time when I'm sitting there and I find myself laughing as I write then I know I'm saying what I want to say and not necessarily what's in And it, it's not that we don't care about the audience. Yeah. It's not that we're saying, screw you guys. We don't care about you. We're not saying that. It's like, I care about you guys so much that I'm going to be yeah. like yeah. being a parent. I'm going to be yeah. them. We're not going to keep checking in, right, with imaginary people who don't even exist yet because right. our show isn't even happening. Yes. They're not even there, right? I care so much that I'm going to be them. And I'm going to lead by writing the best play that I can in collaboration with all my peers, you know, director, actors, producers, you name it, etc. You know what we're talking about. Um, but I'm going to lead, and that's how much we care about the audience. And that's a brave and bold thing to do. Yeah. It requires, you know, yeah. some privilege, right? Yeah, and don't sweat me as I'll fly. Did you, did you look up this thing? Oh, I, 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 I,